Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of the alternative agent types that you can use in Langchain. And specifically, we'd want to use this agent with Anthropic LLMs. So we're going to be taking a look at this agent. It's called the XML agent. And we're going to see how to use it with some simple tools. We're going to be adding in a rag pipeline using Pangon serverless. And we're also going to be using Cohere's embed v3 embeddings. So three relatively new models and services there. So that will be pretty interesting and we'll see what we get. So we're going to start here on the agent types page on the, in the line chain docs. So we come down to here and we can see some information. Okay. So you have like the open AI ones here and then we have XML, right? So this is the one we're going to focus on. And it literally says if you're using anthropic models or other models good at XML. So uh, maybe they have a example of XML somewhere which yes would look like this so you can see that the the different format that XML uses is literally like XML with the sort of HTML like tags you have the tool name here so that's like the action that you would get within the JSON that you'd pass to a react agent you have the tool input so that's the action input and this would be the response that the agent will get right then it must answer like this so it passes the final answer tags like so it's a little more compact than the uh, react approach and obviously with models that have been trained to use this it's going to work better it's going to be more reliable which is important so yeah it's a good thing to use especially if you are using anthropic models so for the example notebook I'm in the Pinecone examples, learn generation Langchain. I've started a new directory for the V1 stuff because we're using Langchain V1 here, which again, that's another kind of new thing. So we're gonna go to XML agents and we're gonna go to open in Colab. Cool, so we're here, I'm gonna connect and yeah, we can start going through it. So these are the versions that we're using. So we have Langchain, Langchain Community, Langchain Hub, where we're going to get the prompt from for this model. Anthropic, as mentioned, Cohere, Pancom Client, and Hugging Face Datasets. A few libraries here, but all pretty lightweight. So, okay, okay, cool. Uh, I think this is probably fine. And here we are. So, oh, this is another new thing. <laughs> so we also have the AI Archive 2 dataset now. If you've from watching a few of my videos, you will have seen me using the AI archive data set. This is a new one. Uh, so if I go over here, I just came off the notebook, but if you come over here, you can kind of see what that looks like. I, we have a lot more data in there now, and that's also growing. I literally have the process running right now, pulling in more archive papers. And yeah, uh, it's a lot cleaner. The uh, the text that's been processed it's using a the yolo x model and uh, the unstructured library for that that's why it takes so long to actually pro it's been processing this for like a week uh but yeah it's uh, much better quality which is great so that's exciting and yeah let's uh so let's start here we'll get this little warning we can ignore it it's not they just want us, they basically want us to use the token, but we don't need the token for this data set. So sorry, hugging face. Now, while we're waiting for that, we can go get our first API key. <laughs> we need a couple. So let's go over to Cohere. So it's dashboard dot cohere dot com. Uh, go over to API keys and you create an API key. So just copy your API key and we're gonna get to where you enter it in a moment. So we've just downloaded uh, just 20,000 rows here. We don't need tons for this example and obviously it costs more and it's gonna take a while if we download the full data set as well. So I'm just taking the first 20,000 there. Then we're gonna take the Cohere API key. So that's all we just got. We're gonna enter that in this little, nice little text box we get. Great. And then we can initialize the Cohere embeddings that we're going to be using. So we have Cohere embeddings, we're using the embed English V3 model. So let's run that. Okay, and then 
Pinecone API key. So we go app.pinecone.io and we'll end up here. Well, you'll probably have like a default project. So I already have my XML agent example there. So I will, I'm going to leave it so that I don't need to wait for it to recreate everything. But mainly I want to go to API keys here and I'm going to copy this. Okay, and I'm going to run this cell, and again, I'm going to enter my API key. Okay, cool. So that looks good. I am using Pinecone serverless here, so I would recommend doing the same. It's uh, what well, one you get. I think it's $100 right now. Obviously, I don't know when you're watching this, but as I record this, you get $100 uh, free credits there. And I know that very soon there will also be a free tier for serverless. And it's just when when you do, if you come to paying, if you ever do, <laughs> I mean, you have a hundred dollars, so probably not for a while anyway. Uh, you, it's it's like nothing. It's crazy cheap. So, anyway, uh, yes. So this is how we would create an embedding. I, maybe I should have put that further up, but fine. So this is using Cohere model. We're embedding documents, or I'm just embedding hello, and yeah you get this dimensional vector out of it. That is the dimensionality of the coherent embedding model. The reason I'm showing you that is because we need to use this just here when we're initializing our index. Now, yeah, we pass in our serverless spec. If you wanted to use pods, you would swap that for a pod spec. And this is the index name. You saw it in my dashboard a moment ago. And yeah, let's, we can run that. With the metric, interestingly, for the cohere models, the embedded V3 models anyway, you can actually use, you can use Euclidean, cosine or dot product. Apparently they all give the same, the same similarity, which is, it is kind of cool. I, I don't know how exactly that is possible, but uh, that's cool. Interesting. So yeah, uh, we word okay, right now, or when you run this, you should probably see zero for your total vector count. It's because I already have the index. And then after that, you would just create your index like this. The ID, we can actually actually do that because we have unique IDs in here now. Where is it? We have this. So yeah, just a little quick fix there. And yeah, you, you run that. Uh, last time I did it, it was 11 minutes. So it's a little bit of time, not too significant. Now, while that is running for you. Let's jump over to grabbing our Anthropic API keys. So this one's always a little hard to find, at least for me, I always find it hard to find. So you have to go to consoleanthropic.com. So console.anthropic.com and you have to create an account if you don't already. Okay, cool. So you should get logged in I, I'm going to go to get API keys and yeah, you can go to create key. I'm going to create a new one and we'll copy that. Okay. So let's continue. We're not actually going to be using the Anthropic API key uh, for a little while, but I wanted to initialize it quickly now anyway. So what we are going to be doing is setting up our agent or everything that our agent needs, which is actually quite a few things you have to think, okay, we need our tool, which is going to be our search. We need our prompts. We need some form of memory because I'm, we're going to make a conversational agent here. And I think there may be some other thing. Oh, the LM, of course. So Anthropic. And yeah, you know, there's a few things that we need there. So let's start with our tool. So slightly different syntax here to maybe what I have shown in the past. So using now using the tool decorator tool decorator, when we use it, we need to make sure we pass a description here. This description is going to be how the LLM decides whether to use this tool or another tool or no tool. So we do need something good here, something descriptive, but concise within our tool. So we're going to pass a string query. Uh, we're going to embed that using cohere. We're going to search using pinecone, making sure that we return our metadata because that will contain our, our actual plain text. And then we return a single string containing all of our responses. Okay. 
So yeah, let's run that. Uh, we've packed that into this tools list. And then what we need is a few different formats for this tools list. And yeah, so we have that. And then to, so when our agent is actually using the tool, it's going to use it like this. So it's going to run the tool and then it's going to input a query. And let's say our query is, can you tell me about Llama 2? Okay, so we're gonna be asking those questions again. Let's see what we get. So we, we get a good response there. Okay, so this is the, the output from our tool that our agent may see, depending on the question that it, that it asks. So we now can go and define our XML agent. So we come down to here. Uh, you know, I'm describing a, a little bit what I already described about you know, how the XML thing works. And here we go. So we want to download a prompt. So this is a XML agent conversational prompt. And you can see here, it's like, okay, you are a helpful assistant. And then it tells it about the different tags that it should use, the XML tags, so on and so on. Okay, so it's the it's what I showed you before. And you can also see here that it allows a few uh, inputs. So the agent scratch pad, it's like its internal thoughts, the input, so our query, and some tools, okay? Another one that we may use is the chat history, uh, which would end up somewhere around, somewhere here, ah, chat history gets inside of there. So we'll need to add that as well. Now we get to our anthropic chat LLM. So we initialize this and we want to enter our API key that we copied from before. Okay, so we now have, we have our tools, we have our LM, we have our prompt. There's a few more steps that we need. So one thing that we need is a way of converting our intermediate steps into text in the correct format. So this is what we get, right? So this goes into the scratch pad, i.e. the internal thoughts of the model. Uh, so it's basically going to take, okay, the, the tool that was decided to be used, uh, the input to that tool and what it got from that tool. Okay, so this is coming from in, in the intermediate steps. So it formats that into a nice uh, string format for the model or for the agent. We have another one here. So this is when it is, uh, so for the initial prompt, how it will decide to use different tools. So we have tool name and that maps to a particular tool description. So we also need that format. And then with that, I think we have pretty much everything. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you can see. So th this is like the agent logic itself. So the, the input that is going into the agent. Then we can see uh, the tool descriptions that are being uh, passed into there. And then we have this. So this is telling our LLM when it sees tool input, so like the ending tool input tag or the ending final answer tag, it should stop. And we should use the XML output, agent output parser, okay? Which is just going to pass whatever the agent has generated into something that is usable, okay? So we, yeah, we, we have that. One thing I should know is that you could technically remove this, uh, but later on, what you will see is that the agent when deciding what tools to use and what information it passes through those tools will have no context of what's happened before. So it's, it's not a very good conversational agent. So you, you basically, you do want to have that in there. Otherwise you're gonna run into issues. Okay, so that's our agent logic definition. And now we need to define our agent executor. There's a, a few steps to this. I know we're there now. So we define our agent executor. We pass in the agent logic that we just uh, defined. We pass in the tools and we're going to set verbose to true so that we can see what's happening when we're running everything. And now what we do is we invoke the agent executor. We pass it out input and chat history. We don't have any chat history right now. We'll handle that soon and yeah well, let's see what we get so we're just passing this input in can you tell me about llama 2 and we'll see what happens okay so we can see that it uses the archive search tool the input is llama 2 it's a little bit weird uh, because we're dropping that end token well that's fine and then you can see it this blue text here is what is returned from the tool okay so it's the observation then 
it decides, okay, I'm going to use a final answer now. I'm going to generate well, generate a final answer. And this is the final answer that it generates. Okay. So this is what gets returned to us. And we can see here, this is the output, right? Based on the information provided, so on and so on. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, so it does get, get the answer. Okay. It's not a hard one to get an answer for. So that's good. Now we would like to add some conversational memory here. Okay. We don't, we don't have any right now. We just have chat history. It's empty. So let's do that. Uh, we will use a conversational buffer window memory. It's like the super basic one. Uh, there, there are obviously many other ways of implementing memory as well, but this one's just nice and easy. And what we will do to start with is create some chat history. Okay, so actually, why am I? So I want to use a message into here. And again, we're going to start with no chat history. Okay, so we just get final answer straight away. It doesn't need to use the, the tool here. Now, we need to extract what we have here and create some chat history with it. Uh, because right now we haven't connected that conversational memory to our agent w whatsoever. And we don't connect it directly. We instead, what we will do is we'll use these methods, add user message and add AI message to manually add everything. Okay. But we're going to wrap it up into a nice little function soon. So after we do that, we'll see that our conversational memory now does have some history in there. So we have this. Okay, that's great. But what we actually need for our XML agent is conversational memory. It looks like this. So we need a string in this format. And you know, we're not far off with this. It's, it's not exactly hard to pass. So let's create a helper function to help us do that. So our memory input into this is going to be the conversational buffer window memory object. We extract the messages. So basically what you see here, we're going to extract those and we're going to create a list with human and AI, depending on whether it's a human message or not, which would be an AI message. And then we're just going to join those together to create a single string in the format that we need. Okay. And now if we print that, we see that we get the format that we need. Cool. So let's wrap all of that into yet another helper function called chat. And this is going to help us deal with the state of our agent or keeping maintaining state in our agent. So run that and let's continue the conversation now. We're going to say, can you tell me about Llama 2? Okay, cool. So we can see the typical stuff here, Llama, and it outputs this, which is it's actually a pretty nice uh, summary. So then we want to continue and I'm going to say, was any red teaming done? And the reason, so the reason I'm asking this is this is a hard question. At least it has been in the past with the old data set. So we should hopefully get something better now because it's cleaner. And we're also using these, you know, these different agents. So let's see what we get. Now, one thing that you will notice here is I'm not saying Llama 2. So this, the context to this question relies on our conversational memory and you can see that it works, right? So we decide to use the archive search tool and the, the look at the query, it's Llama 2 red team. I didn't mention Llama 2 here. I mentioned Llama 2 in the previous interaction. So it's looking at the previous conversational memory and pulling that in to the query. And that's good because we actually get some relevant context here. So you can see, okay, risk score output by Llama 2 safety reward model on prompt, so on and so on. Okay, cool. And we can see we come down to here. It says, yes, red teaming was done on Llama 2 models to evaluate risk from generating malicious code, no, 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 so on and so on. Which is, this is the best response I've, I've had on this question so far by by a long shot usually it's pretty bad and maybe that's a data set issue but it's also we're using a good agent here so that is it for this little tutorial on xml agents with langchain v1 we've gone through a few things using a few different models which has been interesting and cool so one we use pancan serverless which obviously kind of new and interesting we also use Anthropic for the LLM, and we also use Cohere and Bennings. And all those together made something that works pretty well, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's it 
for this video. I hope this has been uh, useful and interesting. But for now, I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again in the next one.